finale. Is Jesus the only way? Let's get into it. Is believing in Jesus the only way for a person to get to heaven? That's what we're going to talk about today on The Beat. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. And so today we are asking the question, is believing in Jesus Christ the only way for a person to get to heaven? I mean, we've got all these other different world religions out here, and yet Christians say Jesus is the only way. And so today I want to share with you four things that I believe totally set Jesus apart from every other religious leader that has ever lived. And the first is his power. In other words, no other religious leader did the things that Jesus did. When you think about all the different miracles that Jesus did, walking on water, calming the storm, raising the dead, healing the blind, all of these are miracles that no other religious leader in the history of time has ever done. And then the greatest miracle of all time is Jesus raising his own body from the dead three days after he was crucified and then showing himself alive to over 500 people as proof that this resurrection wasn't just simply a rumor. Every other religious leader died and is still dead, and yet the Bible, along with other secular history books, record this amazing miracle of Jesus' resurrection. The second thing that sets Jesus apart from every other religious leader is prophecy. What do you think about that? The miracles that sets mm -hmm. Jesus apart from yeah, even the other... Huh? Even in that time period, like that was his way to prove that he's God. Mm -hmm. You know, he's healing people. He's yeah. Performing all these miracles that no one has ever seen before. What we read early in, in John 14, he said, he, he said, if you don't believe, believe my word, at least believe the works. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> like, it's God doing the works. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't do, if I was a man, right. I can't do these things. Like, mm -hmm. I can't raise the dead. I can't, you know, right. um, um, heal person that's been paralyzed their whole life. I can't do this without the power of God. So if you don't even believe my words, believe uh -huh. the works. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, he, he's spot on with that. He's spot on with that for sure. The prophecies. Jesus fulfilled prophecies that were written about him hundreds of years before he even set foot on the earth. There were prophecies written about the fact that he'd be born of a virgin. There were prophecies that spoke about the exact date in which he would be crucified. There are prophecies written about how he would die and the details concerning his death and how he would live. These and hundreds of other prophecies, Jesus fulfilled with perfect accuracy and perfect precision. No other religious leader in the history of time even had prophecies written about them, let alone had the power to fulfill them. The third thing that sets Jesus apart from every other religion. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. The prophecies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are hundreds of prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, hundreds of prophecies even leading up to his birth, how he would be born, what line mm -hmm. he would come from, what city he would come out of, um, you know, so many things, how he would suffer. Right. It's so funny because it, it's people that believe that, you know, he knew of the prophecy. So he tried to, you know, line yeah. himself up with prophecy, but then they don't account for how, again, how yeah. he was born. Yeah. Like where his parents is taking him yeah. when he was younger, you know? So this is how we even know that he is the Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Because anybody, if there was no prophecies about Jesus and then a man comes and he just claims that he's God and he goes through this and he does all these miracles, all of this, all of that doesn't even matter mm -hmm. if he's not prophesied beforehand, right? Because anybody can say, well, how could God die? What? Why would God do that? Why would he? But then you see the prophecy hundreds of years before that saying that he would suffer mm -hmm. and he would um, he would be bear our iniquities. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The book of Isaiah, mm -hmm. all of these prophecies, it is in details explaining right how he would die mm -hmm. and how he would suffer so that you wouldn't have to question like, oh, dang, wait, right. God already said that this will happen. So that's how the disciples knew who he were. He was like, who do you think I am? Yeah. Do you think I'm Elijah? Do you think I'm, you know? Yeah. And he's like, no, I think you're the Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> On the prophecy. The, the Holy Spirit, you know, revealed that to them. But yeah. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, he's he's absolutely spot on with this. But let's get back into it. This is fire. This is fire. Hallelujah. Religious leader is his preaching or his message. In other words, no other religious leader taught the way Jesus taught. Jesus is the only religious leader that actually provided a genuine solution for the problem of sin. Mm -hmm. Every other religious leader says you have to do, you have to obey, you have to live and obey some sort of moral code in order to earn God's favor and earn his forgiveness, which basically puts you in a state of insecurity or uncertainty because you never really know if you've done enough in order to earn God's forgiveness. Jesus' message is very clear. You and I are sinners, and even on our best day, we can't do enough good to make up for all the wrongs that we've done. And so Jesus says, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to pay for all of your sins with my precious blood. And all I'm asking you to do in return is to believe in me. Yep. And that is a message that is despised by so many people. Why? Because we get no credit for that. This is a free gift. God comes in the form of a man. Jesus Christ lives a perfect life, lives, lives the requirements. Let's define what a perfect life is. He lives the requirements of the law, of the Mosaic Covenant, perfect mm -hmm. to the T, to the yod and the tittle. Mm -hmm. And he, being the perfect lamb as prophesied, the lamb of God, lays down his life for those who were under the first covenant, freeing them from the curse of the law. Freeing them from the curse of the law. Tearing the veil between Gentile and Israelite. The veil being rent and torn. There's no more Gentiles. There's no more Israelite. It's only one people of God. Mm -hmm. Those who believe on Jesus Christ. What are your thoughts? Amen. <laughs> and those who believe on him shall be saved. And that's how you just know the, the word is so perfect, you know, because you see the pattern mm -hmm. like going Passover and like the sacrificing of a, a unblemished lamb, mm -hmm. and the blood over the doorpost and those Gentiles coming out with the Egyptians. Yeah. You know, or if they were in their house, then they're safe, yeah. you know, so it's just, it's amazing. I wanted to add, because what he said made me think about Paul's letter uh, to the Romans, I think it's in chapter seven, where he speaks of wanting to to do good, but not having the ability to do so. Right, knowing knowing good and evil, like we know when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, they know the difference of good and evil, and they want to do good. I want to do good, but I don't have the ability to do it. But not only does does Jesus, when he saves, when you believe on Jesus, not only does he save you and grant you eternal life. He gives you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit then begins to convert you from the inside out. Your spirit is born again and your flesh now starts to come under subjection of the spirit. Because we know the flesh is weak. The, the Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. So the flesh needs to be brought under subjection. But God doesn't force us to do that on our own. When you're under a, a, a false religion of morality, you have to, they do so, some crazy stuff to try to get their flesh under subjection, right? You got people, monks that'll, that'll fast and separate themselves and shave them head. And you got um, um, some religions where they're cutting themselves and doing these extreme things to try to get their flesh under control. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I, 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 I just give you my Holy Spirit. He's going to give you the power to say no to this and to say no to that. He's going to give you the power to walk upright and to choose what's right. You're no longer going to be a slave to sin because who the son sets free is free yeah. indeed. And these are things that Jesus taught, right? These are these are things that, that Jesus promised and that the prophets promised. In the book of Jeremiah, let's read. Let's read the book of Jeremiah, the promise. Let's see. Uh, let's see. New Covenant. I think it's I think it's chapter 30 something, but I don't want to. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> I want to read this because this is very, very important. I want to go to the chapter, though, because 
let's see. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, and we'll start at 31. All right. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the, when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Hallelujah. 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 And we know that that covenant was established in the blood of Jesus, that new covenant mm -hmm. that was established for the children of Israel, Israel and Judah, Israel and Judah, and God in his mercy also allowed the Gentiles to be grafted into that same olive tree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So everyone has the ability to be saved, but we won't go into the details of that right now. We're going to get back to it. The fourth thing that sets Jesus apart from every other religious leader is his perfection. In other words, no other religious leader lived the way Jesus lived. Some of the other religious leaders, even to their own admission, lived very sinful lives. Some of them were polygamists, others were murderers, and others made countless prophecies that never came to pass. But Jesus is the only religious leader who even claimed to live a perfect life. His followers described him as a man who was without sin. But most surprisingly, the very same people that crucified him admitted that they could find no fault in him. And so because Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, this automatically sets him apart from every other religious leader who has ever lived. Now for the Christian who says that there is another way other than Jesus to get to heaven, what you're saying is that first of all, the Bible is false, but second of all, that Jesus himself was a liar because he clearly said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Now, I know this was a very controversial subject and one that you have probably had to relate. That's it. I mean, it. point blank, period. Right. Do not be ashamed of the truth. The Bible says that those that believe in him shall never be ashamed. So stand on the word of God, stand on what Jesus said. He is the only way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the life. In him was life. And he had the ability to give life to all those who believe on him, period. Any final words? Absolutely. Praise Absolutely. God. Praise Thank y'all for tuning in. We love you. God loves you. God wants you to return unto him. Through faith in Jesus Christ, there's no other way. There's no other way given to man whereby we may be saved. So place your faith in Jesus. Yes. He is a worthy, worthy Lord and leader and great, 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 great guide. He gives us his Holy Spirit. He doesn't leave you in a state that you come to him. He will change your heart. He will, uh, he will teach you to love. He will teach you to walk in God's statutes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a good one. God bless. <laughs>